I've used a term on the channel before called attach rate. And in terms of business terms for comics, it's one of the most important metrics that you can understand as a publisher, as a creator, especially as a retailer. But you may have been in this industry and not heard this term because at least at the publisher level, they're not really thinking this way. And most creators, unless they're doing, um, you know, self-funded, you know, indie type books, they also might not think this way, but it's a really important term and having a good understanding of it can help you immensely. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, attach rate, like I said, it's not a term that you probably have heard that much in the industry, but it's a really important one. And it's important for both forecasting and also understanding how to grow your business. Now, basically what attach rate is, is when you, and, and it's a term that's used a lot in gaming. So I'll describe it first from that perspective and then I'll explain how it's used for comics. So for gaming, the attach rate is basically when you sell a console, like you come out with the PS5 and what, how many titles are you going to sell at launch day, within 30 days, within 60 days, within 90 days? And that's called the attach rate. The attachment is the titles that are attached to that console sale. So if you're, pub if you're producing a console, what you want is a very high attach rate, particularly from your launch games. And sometimes companies will even put together a little metric around, you know, we had eight games at launch, the attach rate is five, so... You know, you, you have basically a little bit, a little bit less than a 60% attach rate to the console. Sometimes it's done much simpler to simply say our attach rate is three games per console sold. Now, why is this metric important? Well, many different ways it's important. First off, on a very just easy one, if you're thinking about an event, like you've got King and Black coming up from Marvel. All right, so the attach rate would be how many titles outside of King and Black do you manage to sell to customers? You want to try and keep your tie-ins within the attach rate. So if, say, King of Black, let's say it's an eight-issue series. I have no idea what the event series will be, but let's say it's eight. Um, if you're able to attach 10 titles to those eight, then your overall comic sales is 18. This is important because if you produce, say, 50 comics attached to it, then you're producing way more than the average attach rate. Now, not everybody is going to buy the same thing. So you don't want 100% sell-through. That would be amazing if you produced 10 tie-ins and you sold 10 tie-ins. That would be great. But on average, you're not going to sell every single comic to every single person. So the best way to think about it is, on average, you want about 50% attach rate to your event. So for example, again, if you have King and Black, it's eight issues. Your average attach rate to that event is 10. Maybe you want to produce 20 tie-ins. This keeps basically the business in alignment and it, it helps you know how to market. Now, if you're a shop, you probably have already figured out why this metric is so important. If you have a Spider-Man book, what's the attach rate to Spider-Man? If you have a pull box customer that's buying, you know, whatever, 10 boxes in their subscription, what's the attach rate of things they buy in the shelf? Understanding this understands, it helps you understand the total scope of your business. Now, if you're a creator, why does this matter? Well, because if you're negotiating for a better rate for your comic or for your work, if you're a writer doing a pitch, one of the most powerful things you can do, now there's a big caveat coming up here, but one of the most powerful things you can do is be intelligent about the attach rate to your comic, basically saying, hey, I'm coming with this project and I can bring these comics with it. If you're, if you're pitching to the big two or even... Uh, it breaks down a little bit with image, but to the big two, if you're if you're saying I'm going to go on Spider-Man, and I'm going to create a you know 20 issue run, but in addition to that 20 issues, I'm going to have an attach rate of three additional comics, as it relates to I don't know tie-ins or fillers or guest appearances in other books. Basically, in the 80s, um, this was a term that people at Marvel, especially on the editorial staff, really understood. This is how they managed the newsstand and managed their business. They would say the attach rate of our portfolio is a metric, and they would know if they were going above or beyond, uh, above or below, sorry, that attach rate, where they needed to course correct, where they need to come in and actually change how the comics are being produced and sold and maybe add certain guest appearances or take some away to make sure that they were you know, fulfilling that 50% attach rate metric. 
Today, the editorial group seem very, very splintered. And the challenge is, as a creator, it's really smart if you can know what attach rate means and know how to manipulate it. So, for example, if you are hired on to, say, write Batman, um, you might want to make a pitch as part of your overall story that your character or your run will cross over with another lower selling book or higher selling book to boost the attach rate overall of the comics. Now, the only challenge here is that the editor you might be talking about might have no idea what it is you're, you're, you're talking about. And that's, that is a challenge you can't overcome. But generally speaking, it's good to know more about the business than less. If you're going to image or you're going to one of the indies, one of the parts of your pitch might be, hey, I'm going to do some things in my book or I'm going to basically bring you know, people into my title, which will then encourage them to buy other books that the publisher is producing. Now, if you're, if you're you know, creating or writing, drawing, whatever, if you're producing a book that's not selling very well, then you know, that's not an argument you'd want to make. But if, say, you're, um, oh, I don't know, if you're Tim Seeley and you're producing Money Shot, um, you may, for example, be, you know, have at least some metrics to suggest, hey, I see that Money Shot is selling 10,000 copies and the comics that are, produ- that are advertised within Money Shot are also, we see, a, you know, from the first issue of Money Shot that came out, I see that there's an increase in sales on books that, that are on those lines. I mean, you can do this math yourself through Comic Cron or other places. You can kind of see, hey, you know, the books that were promoted inside the title I was working on sold more when my title went to press. Uh, in many cases, you can do this. You can do this at Marvel, DC, other places. You can at least get some sense of what the connection is. If you're writing, say, The Immortal Hulk, and they did an advertisement for, I don't know, the, the Hawkeye limited series, uh, it's, it's, or, or even better, an ongoing series that you saw a slight bump in sales when they started advertising within your book, then you should at least write that down because it gives you something to go back to the editor to say, hey, I'm trying to attach, uh, to uh, track the attach rate of how my comic is, in, is helping other comics sell. And this all becomes bargaining power for you to be able to negotiate a better deal, to perhaps streamline your audience. It's also just good understanding of the industry that you can obtain for yourself, and it really doesn't take that much effort to get. Attach rate is a very interesting metric, and in most businesses, comics often being the exception, attach rate is something that they, they focus on very, very heavily. If you're a comic store, you may be focusing on attach rate not even realizing it. In a lot of cases, comic shops are you know track what kind of halo effect, I've heard that term come in too, that they might get from an event on another title, or if they, you know, they just kind of, if they notice that if they put a lower selling title next to a higher selling book, maybe the lower selling title sells more. These are all little tricks and games that comic shops often will do to try and boost the overall sales of the titles that they're selling in their shop. But attach rate is, uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's a powerful metric to understand. It doesn't take that much work to understand. It's kind of a pity that more people aren't taking that effort because better understanding of the business gives you more confidence as a retailer to sell, gives you more ability as a publisher to know what to produce. And as a creator, it gives you more confidence to ask for a better deal or negotiate stronger rates for yourself. Also, a really savvy creators and publishers can start utilizing attach rates to bring guest appearances in at the right times or figure out when to do a spinoff. If you have a popular line, maybe you could, you know, produce some other comics along this line because you can prove that, you know, you, the attach rate holds up. You know, if you're doing White Knight, for example, and you have some spinoffs coming from White Knight and you see that the customers for White Knight, 90% of them say bought the spinoff, well, your attach rate is quite high. And this is a metric you want to again write down, remember, and use for future negotiation because it shows you know how to manage an overall portfolio and you know how to make money for the company. Publishers uh, may not always think this way, but generally speaking, it is a money game. So if you can show how your title brings more money in than the title itself, that's a really powerful weapon to have in your arsenal. It, it's nothing but beneficial. But anyway... That's what I mean when I say attach rate. It's Again, it's a term that if you work in gaming, software, even manufacturing kind of you know, physical goods, attach rate is, is something that people track all the time, along with things like uh, EBITDA and, and other financial terms. And we'll get into those at some later date, too.
Anyway, do you have any questions? Does this make sense? Uh, have you ever thought about the business this way? Would you like to uh, get more examples of how a tax rate works and how you might calculate it? Let me know in the comments below. I'm happy to go into more detail. Otherwise, like, subscribe, uh, follow me on social media and, and Twitter and all that kind of stuff. It's all so much fun. But most importantly, thanks for listening. Thank <laughs> you.